This is Penny. <laughs> she is your friend. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Penny and Sheldon moments on The Big Bang Theory. I'm not an actress. I'm an actress. <laughs> All right, you're an actress. <laughs> They never dated, but Sheldon and Penny's friendship is one of the most important relationships of the entire series. And for this list, we'll be looking at the best moments they had together. What's your favorite Shenny moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Penny Knocks Three Times Sheldon Cooper has many idiosyncrasies, and his knock three times obsession is one of his most iconic. But as some fans might remember, he isn't the only one who does a triple knock. Penny also gives it a whirl on a couple of occasions. Sheldon's reactions, while quite different, are both very funny. The first time it happens is in season 8, and the wry smile on Sheldon's face when he opens the door is priceless, as is his advice that she not do it again or else she might never stop. By the third one, you realize there was something strangely enjoyable about it. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of want to do it again. I don't recommend it. You'll be doing it the rest of your life. Penny heeds his warning for a couple years, but in season 11, she gives it another shot. This time, Sheldon's look of annoyance says it all. But just to emphasize, he says it too. Sheldon? 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 It's annoying when you do it. Number 19. A Streetcar Named Desire Sheldon is generally not very impressed with other people, and rarely praises anyone but himself. Prepare to be humbled and weep at the glory of my genius. <laughs> Before this, Penny's acting career was mostly presented as a joke, made up of awful killer ape movies, a corny commercial, and off-key singing. But for one shining moment in season six, all that was put aside, and we got to see that Penny is actually very good at what she does. Acting, not waitressing, of course. As impressed as we all were, it was Sheldon who was maybe the most in awe of his friend, and it was sweet to see him compliment her. She's remarkable. She really is. Our Penny's a star. How can she remember all those lines? But as a waitress, she can't remember no tomato on my hamburger. <laughs> Number 18. The Tie on the Door While they had plenty of book smarts, Howard, Raj, Leonard, and Sheldon were quite lacking when it came to street smarts, pop culture, and the lives of all us regular folks. Madonna was married to this Ridgemont High alum. Oh my god, Sean Penn! How do you know these things? I go outside and I talk to people! <laughs> That was until Penny came into their lives. For all of the guys, but particularly for Sheldon, Penny was their conduit to the non-genius world. Like what it means when your roommate puts a tie on their bedroom door. This is a question Sheldon asks Penny when Leonard's door handle has been accessorized in such a way. It's kind of endearing to see Penny teach the genius about social semiotics, as he puts it. Come on, you went to college. Yes, but I was 11. <laughs> All right, look, a tie on the doorknob usually means someone doesn't want to be disturbed because they're, you know, getting busy. <laughs> Number 17. Rent Money As a waitress slash struggling actress, Penny was often living paycheck to paycheck. But sometimes, those paychecks weren't enough to cover all of her expenses, as was the case in season two's The Financial Permeability. No big deal, I'm just a little behind on my bills because I cut back my hours at the restaurant and my car broke down. If you recall, I pointed out the check engine light to you several months ago. <laughs> Penny lays out her financial woes on Sheldon, and while it doesn't take a genius to figure out that she needs more money, it does take a genius to lend it to her. Without any hesitation at all, Sheldon breaks out his hidden stash of cash and offers it up to Penny, who, with a little hesitation, accepts the help. Sheldon, honey, I don't want things to be weird between us. Won't it also be weird if I have to say hello to you every morning on my way to work and you're living in a refrigerator box and washing your hair with rainwater? <laughs> I'll pay you back as soon as I can. Number 16. Stan Lee 
As diehard comic book fans, this episode sees the guys over the moon about Stan Lee's signing at the comic book store. But for Sheldon, that excitement quickly turns to anger and sadness when he realizes the court date to challenge a ticket he got while driving Penny to the hospital is on the same day. Okay, he's going to jail. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Thursday's Stan Lee Day. Now you see what you've done? Although he misses out on the signing, he gets an even better opportunity. Would your friend get Stan Lee's address and take you to his house to meet him? Well, Penny would. And you thought you'd just come over to my house uninvited? You said we were invited. Oh, no, no, I said I'm inviting you to come with me to Stan Lee's house. <laughs> she would also run away before the cops arrive, but still, what a great friend. Number 15, acting lessons. Action. <laughs> Okay, it's not a movie, it's improv, so no one calls action. Hey, you taught me something. <laughs> In order to improve his performance as a professor, Amy encourages Sheldon to take acting lessons from Penny so that he might loosen up in front of the students. What follows is one of the best all-time Penny and Sheldon scenes. First, we have Sheldon refusing to do the warm-up exercises. Then Sheldon's poor improv skills are put on hysterical display. Sheldon does finally let himself go when doing a scene he wrote involving himself and Spock. Oh, Shelly, a man's here to take you away to the future. <laughs> However, it hits so close to home, Penny has to call his mother, worried that she might have broken him. Mrs. Cooper, hey, it's Penny. Yeah, I think I broke your son. <laughs> Hold on, talk to your mother. <laughs> Mommy, I love you. <laughs> Don't let Spock take me to the future. <laughs> Number 14, Morning Learning. When they first meet, Sheldon and Penny's areas of expertise are completely different. And for the most part, Sheldon couldn't care less about expanding his pop culture knowledge. Penny, for her part, doesn't love science, regardless of what she told the cute scientist that one time. You know, I love science. Since when? Since always. <laughs> Call me a geek, but I am just nuts for the whole subatomic particle thing. Come season nine, however, and the two have a great idea to spend their mornings expanding their knowledge. Who would have guessed back in season one that Penny would ever know the symbol for helium, or even more importantly, that Sheldon would be able to name a Kardashian? Chloe? Yes! Ah. <laughs> See, I remember because if it looks like Kim, it's Kim. If it looks kind of like Kim, it's Courtney. If it looks nothing like Kim, it's Chloe. <laughs> Number 13, teaching Penny a little physics. What is physics? Physics comes from the ancient Greek word physica. It's at this point that you'll want to start taking notes. <laughs> As fans will remember, the morning learning wasn't the first time Sheldon attempted to impart some science knowledge on Penny. The first time was all the way back in season three. She was dating Leonard at the time and was feeling a little insecure about not being able to talk to him about his work. So she asked Sheldon if he could teach her a little physics. While the lesson involves more frustration than actual learning, she's able to memorize what is essentially both a summary and insult of Leonard's work. In fact, recently I've been thinking that given the parameters of your experiment, the transport of electrons through the aperture of the nanofabricated metal rings is qualitatively no different than the experiment already conducted in the Netherlands. <laughs> And of course, we can't forget the Fig Newtons. Fig Newtons were named after a town in Massachusetts, not the scientist. <laughs> Number 12, Penny quits her job. Although Penny never really makes it as an actress, she did try for years to get her career going, one time going so far as to quit her waitressing job in order to devote all her energy to her dream. Great, because I've been thinking if I really want this acting thing to work, I need to focus all my energy on it. And to do that, I should quit waitressing at the Cheesecake Factory. This was a move that didn't sit well with Leonard, who was much more pragmatic and careful with his life choices. While he tried to keep those thoughts to himself, he just couldn't keep from letting his disapproval be known. Still, the initial support she didn't get from her boyfriend, Penny found in Sheldon of all people. Am I being an idiot or not? No. I don't think you are. Really? The best way to achieve a goal is to devote 100% of your time and energy to it. As confident as she was in the move, it was also admittedly scary, and that vote of confidence from her friend really meant a lot. 
Number 11. When Leonard is at sea the show's seventh season begins with Leonard at sea, leaving Penny and Sheldon to spend a lot of time together back in California, just the two of them. During one of their many evenings together, the two friends eat, play 3D chess, and have an emotional breakthrough that only helps to deepen their understanding of each other. YouTube changed its user interface from a star-based rating system to a thumbs-up rating system. I tell people I'm okay with it, but I'm really not. <laughs> in fact, what seems on the surface to be a rather silly revelation by Sheldon leads to an even bigger admission, a strengthening of their friendship, and maybe best of all, a hug. I'm really sorry, I should have known better. Your apology is accepted. Thank you. How about a hug? How about a hearty handshake? Come on. <laughs> Number 10. The First Soft Kitty Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of fur. The Soft Kitty song would become something very special between Penny and Sheldon, and in the season one episode, The Pancake Batter Anomaly, we get to hear it for the very first time. My mom used to sing it to me when I was sick. I'm sorry, honey, I don't know it. I'll teach you. This was still very early on in their relationship, and Sheldon was being the selfish jerk he always is when he's sick. And yet, Penny still took care of him. My mom used to give me sponge baths. <laughs> okay, ground rules. No sponge baths and definitely no enemas. Singing Soft Kitty and rubbing VapoRub counterclockwise on someone's chest can be quite the bonding moment between two people, as it was in this case for Sheldon and Penny. Keep rubbing. <laughs> Little ball of fur. <laughs> Number nine, picking out a suit. In season one, Penny helped Leonard pick out a suit to wear for a conference. And in season three, she took Sheldon shopping for a suit to wear to his award ceremony. It'll give you confidence. You know, sometimes when I'm feeling all stressed out about something, I go out and buy a cute top or a fun skirt and I have a whole new outlook on life. The montage that follows is a wonderful Sheldon and Penny moment, as his choices get more and more ridiculous until he finally tries on the simple black suit that she suggested. Okay, then anything I put on now is only gonna suffer in comparison. <laughs> Her amazed and slightly breathless reaction when Shelly walks out of the changing room, looking all dapper, is almost as good as his reaction to Amy's wedding dress many years later. Wow! <laughs> You look beautiful. Although, can we all agree that she was wrong about the checkered suit he tried on? That one looked great also, right? Number eight, the love test. It could be argued that the evolution of Sheldon and Penny's relationship and their understanding and appreciation of each other over the course of the series is the most important relationship on the show. Well, I suppose I do think of you as a sister. And sometimes a mother. <laughs> It's getting creepy again. There are some key moments that are signposts of that growth and evolution, with the love test being one of them. Wow, I just felt this wave of affection for you. <laughs> I'm sure it's not too much Bible juice. <laughs> and the wave is gone. And while they didn't fall in love after doing the test, they did fall deeper in like. But did they end up going to GaryCon together? That's what we want to know. Do we fly or drive? <laughs> Do we wear costumes? And if so, who gets to be Gary? <laughs> Number seven, the scavenger hunt. Would you stop pouting? So you picked my name, get over it. If you were looking for the seventh best Penny and Sheldon moment, all the clues and a riddle would point to Team Community College Night School from the Scavenger Vortex episode in season seven. I solved it! Penny's street smarts combined with Sheldon's book smarts and his bowling ball made the Lightning Sharks an almost unbeatable team. We say almost because Raj made sure there were no losers. Don't you see? When we're all having fun together, we're already winners! Which leads us to maybe the most important question of the entire episode. How did he get the gold coins in everyone's pockets without them knowing? Number six, birthday bathroom. When Sheldon gets overwhelmed at his party and runs to the bathroom to escape, it's Penny who goes to talk to him. How do you know I'm not using the facilities? 
because you email me your bathroom schedule once a week even though I've clicked unsubscribe like a thousand times. And while in that moment, it makes perfect sense for her to be that person, she acknowledges how she used to be the person that would have been making fun of Sheldon rather than comforting him. There was a time I never would have been friends with someone like you and now you are one of my favorite people, so. Sheldon loves Amy and Leonard is his best friend, but the birthday bathroom scene is a nice example of the special relationship he has with Penny and how it and they changed over the years. You know, I used to hate these hugs. Now they're just extremely irritating. Number five, Penny Blossoms. In an attempt to earn extra money, Penny starts a business making flower hair barrettes she calls Penny Blossoms. I made one for myself and then all the girls at work wanted one. Then I showed some to this lady who runs a shop in Old Town. She sells cards and homemade jewelry. She said she wanted to sell them. I said, okay. And in one week, I made $156. When she shows Sheldon what she's doing, he does some quick math and points out that her hard work is only going to make her $2,600 a year. That's all? Before taxes. <laughs> well, I don't have to pay taxes on this stuff. I believe the Internal Revenue Service would strongly disagree. Disappointed by that figure, Penny asks Sheldon for help, which he does by creating an assembly line process and teaching her some production improving sea shanties. Can we way, hey, blow the man down, or I'll help you along with the toe of my boot. Give me some time to blow the man down. For her part, Penny introduces Sheldon to caffeine, and although she does get some orders and makes some money that first day, we never hear about the Penny Blossoms again. Number four, emergency room. When Penny falls in the bathtub, Sheldon takes on the role of the hero and drives her to the emergency room. Warp speed ahead, Mr. Spock. <laughs> Mr. Spock did not pilot the Enterprise. He was a science officer. And I guarantee you that if he ever saw the Enterprise's check engine light blinking, he would pull the ship over immediately. While the drive there is in itself a great moment between these two, the scene in the emergency room with them filling out the paperwork is truly a top Penny and Sheldon interaction. There's a list of all major behavioral diagnoses, e.g. depression, anxiety, etc. Oh my god, what the hell does this have to do with my stupid shoulder? Episodes of subpsychotic rage. Especially when she begs him to be sympathetic, but his efforts just come across as more creepy than comforting. Then we get back to the apartment and in a truly great turnabout is fair play moment, Penny asks Sheldon to sing her Soft Kitty. Soft kitty, warm kitty, Soft little kitty, warm kitty, little Happy ball kitty, of fur. sleepy kitty, Happy purr, kitty, purr, sleepy purr. kitty, purr, purr, purr. <laughs> Number three, the flash drive. When the guys head to San Francisco on a train and Sheldon forgets a flash drive with his paper on it at home, Penny is his only hope of retrieving that paper. Why do you have to give your paper to George Smoot? It's brilliant, he needs to read it. So Sheldon calls Penny, asks her very nicely to do him a favor, and Penny gets him the paper he needed. Bazinga, you fell for another one of our classic pranks. In actuality, Sheldon doesn't ask nicely. Penny messes with him a little and Leonard has to grab the phone and do a little mediating between them. What up, Moon Pie? <laughs> no one calls me Moon Pie, but meanwhile. <laughs> Hey, Penny, Leonard again. But we weren't joking when we said Penny got Sheldon that all-important paper. Now please, put the flash drive in the USB port. The one that looks like a little duck's mouth. <laughs> Number two, solving string theory. Sometimes it just takes a new set of eyes to solve a problem. People have been stuck on this for decades. What, decades? Really? It's, it's a string. How hard can it be? <laughs> it's, it's straight, it's in a loop, it gets knotted up with other strings. And in this case, those eyes belonged to Penny, and that problem was string theory. While she usually tunes out when any of the guys are talking science, this night she actually remains focused and awake as Sheldon explains string theory to her. And with one simple word, Not. she opens Sheldon's eyes to amazing possibilities that he hadn't ever considered. You know, topologically speaking, that has a lot of interesting possibilities. And the best part of it all is when she tells Leonard and Amy about it. Turns out the answer's knots. That's cute, but you can't have knots in more than four dimensions. Mm, you can if you consider them sheets, good night. The stunned look on their faces is priceless. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Nimoy napkin hug. You'll be pleased to know I'm prepared for whatever you have to offer. There's a reason why this moment gets mentioned so often in almost any discussion of the Big Bang Theory moments. It's because it really is that great. The fact that Penny thought of getting Sheldon this gift is super sweet, but we can probably all admit that we're more impressed by the fact that she recognized Leonard Nimoy and knew who he was in the first place. Sorry, the napkin's dirty. He wiped his mouth with it. <laughs> Possess the DNA of Leonard Nimoy? Then there's Sheldon's overwhelmed reaction, which is not only amazing, but it also brings us to the hug. It's a display of affection that, even in season two, we could all recognize for just how special it was. Leonard, look, Sheldon's hugging me. <laughs> it's a Saturnalia miracle. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.